Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Today we're going, we're back in the kitchen and we're going to cook something from my long past. I haven't had this in decades. In, in fact, it, it's, a, it's an upgrade. If you've ever had uh, Chinese wonton soup, this is the upgrade to that. And this is called Sui Gao, S-U-I-G-A-O. And it's made very similar, a lot of the same ingredients as uh, the, the wonton. But we're gonna be adding a few more things. Carrot, we're gonna slice up some carrot. <clears throat> we're gonna be adding water chestnuts. Along with that, we're going to rehydrate black fungus, which is essentially a mushroom. So we're going to rehydrate that, and we're going to have uh, shrimp along with that. And also, we have the ground pork. Real easy, and if you have a, a food uh, processor, it speeds it up. But the difference today is you're not going to be using the slicing, chopping blade. You're just going to be using the beating blade right here. There's no sharp edges on it, and all it does, is it just beats uh, everything in into a mix. And so what I'm going to do, <clears throat> these, these are 30-count uh, shrimp, and I already uh, cleaned them up, deveined them, and shelled them, and started cutting them up into smaller pieces like this. And that's what's going to go into the food processor. So once uh, we, we made the soy gal, uh, the, uh, the dumplings, uh, what, what uh, we can do, we, can, we have a lot of choices. We can, uh, number one, have it in a soup form, just like the wonton soup. We can steam it a, as a, a dumpling, uh, like in your dim sum uh, restaurants. Or uh, <clears throat> we can uh, deep fry them. Deep frying them, uh, or you can fry them like a pot sticker, and they're very similar. And, and one of the uh, sauces that I love using on it is the hoisin sauce. And this is a, a, a five pound can of hoisin sauce, and it gives it a really nice, unique flavor when you put it on top. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to reconstitute some of the, the black fungus here and it doesn't take much you don't need you know very much of this uh, a little goes a long ways so just uh oh that's going to be plenty right there <clears throat> and, and you're going to see see them reconstitute uh, it'll take about 30 minutes for this. So while these, uh, the black fungus is reconstituting, we're going to do some chopping. We, we got to cut up uh, the water chestnuts into small strips. And then also with the, the carrots, we're going to cut them, dice them up. So uh, we're going to do that. So we'll, we're going to do that and we'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, now that we've got everything all cut up, we have the carrots, we have the black fungus, we have all the shrimp cut, and the uh, pork. What we're working with, this is one pound of ground pork, one pound of white shrimp. This is half a can of the um, water chestnuts to give it texture. Also, a little bit of flavor and texture carrots and these these were julienned and then chopped up into smaller pieces and then we have the uh, the mushroom the the black fungus and then we're going to add the spices so the first thing that we're going to do we're going to go ahead put the ground pork in this is one pound like i said uh, if you want to make less you can just cut everything in half uh, portions or whatever you do so we're going to put the pork in there first then we're going to put the, the shrimp in. So we got all the shrimp in there. Then we're going to put the carrots. 
and same thing with water chestnuts. I like water, uh, the lot of water chestnuts. If you want a little bit a uh, little more chewy, you can add in or you can substitute the water chestnuts <coughs> with uh, bamboo shoots if you want something a little chewier. I don't want uh, <clears throat> mine to be chewy. So that's why I prefer using the uh, water chestnuts instead. <clears throat> then we're going to add the black fungus. And this is all finely cut, as you can see. Uh, but the long pieces are fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's soft, and so it's not going to poke through the outer skin. <clears throat> now what we want to do, we want to add in the spices. First thing that we want to do, this is uh, <clears throat> sugar here, and I'm using, um, what was that? Oh, yeah, a teaspoon, uh, one teaspoon of sugar. So we're going to put all of that in, and that helps to balance out the flavor more than anything. Then after that, we have <clears throat> two tablespoons of cornstarch. And that's to help bind everything. Then on top of that, then we have white pepper. This is a, uh, a full um, teaspoon of white pepper. So we're just going to go ahead and add that in to that. Then... <clears throat> What we're going to do, we're going to add one, one teaspoon of the sesame oil. And this gives, gives it the aroma and also helps to bind. Uh, it's a nice flavor that, that's being added. And then after that, we have two tablespoons of soy sauce. And that's what gives it the salt. Two. All righty. And, and so after that, then we're going to put in two tablespoons of cooking oil. <clears throat> you can use any, any kind of cooking oil. Uh, I have a vegetable oil here, one and two, <clears throat> and that's all you need on that. And then after that, add a little bit of water. It's uh, <clears throat> you want things to bind really well. So two tablespoons of water, one, two. Put the top on. Like I said, th this isn't a chopping. Um, blade that's going on here. This is uh, more like a, a, a blade for uh, beating batter almost. But and now we're just going to run this for a moment. Let it, but then it, we'll open it up to make sure that. Things are getting mixed properly. We want to use a, a proper uh, spatula in here. So we'll just kind of push this down. What we want to do, we want to just kind of shred the, the meat a little bit, not uh, take it apart or chop it up or anything like that. We're just, just pulling it. And that's what we're doing uh, with the beater blade. So we want we want this a little bit chunky, but not real chunky.
And so, or check this, see how it's looking. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Still need some more work on this. <clears throat> Still need some more pulling. But that's all we're doing with this. We're, we're uh, letting the machine do all the pulling of the, the meat and then the blending. And so you want to make sure you get it pushed down below the beater blades. That way it can uh, really work the meat and really pull the fibers and, and make it soft. So we're going to do this for a few more seconds and it should be ready. And that is done. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and pull this out, and I'll show you how everything looks <clears throat> once I get this out of here. We'll be right back. Okay, and then here's the finished uh, product, what, we're, what uh, we want to do right now. Put this back into the refrigerator to solidify, cool off and for a couple hours or even overnight. And then what we're going to do, we're going to come back and we'll show you how to wrap them with these uh, wrappers. Uh, I like using the pot sticker ones, especially if you're going to uh, deep fry them or steam them. These are really good. Uh, you can also uh, fry them in, in a wok. Uh, so there's a lot of good uses with this. And uh, this will make quite a few uh, to begin with, but we'll We'll come back in about uh, two hours after the meat is chilled down some and the flavors have blended with the meat. And uh, we'll show you how to wrap these. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. Uh, the meat uh, blend has uh, chilled. Now what we're going to do, we're going to wrap. Like I said uh, before we went to break, uh, I like using the pot sticker wrappers and they're round and, and makes it real easy to uh, just fold and, and uh, clamp uh, each one shut. But you can use standard wonton wrappers. Difference is these are square. And, and so uh, the wrap is going to be different. It kind of shows you a picture of, of the front and you're going to use less uh, <clears throat> filling on the wonton wrappers. In fact, you you just want to use a, a, a small half a teaspoon of uh, meat on the soy gal. We're going to be using half a, a tablespoon in the wrap. So we're going to bring over a fresh uh, wrap, grab the, uh, the wrap here, and you'll notice it has a powdery coating on there. And, and so that helps it stay drier when... Uh, <clears throat> while you are um, doing the wrapping and uh, tucking. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now, now that we uh, put some here, we're just going to wet the edge. And with the uh, wet edge, okay, so we're going to make another one here. And what we want to do, just, just uh, lightly fill the uh, cup of the scoop. Uh, this is half a tablespoon, and like it, again, what we're going to do, we're just going to wet the edge all the you know, most of the way around. Then we're just going to fold it real easy and, and squeeze all the air out. <clears throat> and then what we want to do, we're going to just tuck. Make a few tucks on the top. And this just, just pulls the, the loose parts in. <clears throat> Oops. That's all. You just real simple wraps. And then just go on to, to the next. And what you want to do is just <clears throat> make... Uh, do the whole pack 
uh, do an entire pack of these uh, the wrappers again just wetting the edge folding it over and squeeze out the air then we're just going to do our tuck And you'll notice when, when you handle these, uh, the wrappers for the pot stickers is going to be drier. And you, like, you want that because uh, the moisture is your enemy on this. <clears throat> and you don't want, you, if you make a whole bunch of these, <clears throat> make, uh, when, you, uh, when you do have a whole bunch of them and you're not going to use them over, the next uh, day you can freeze and freezing is good there's nothing wrong with freezing it uh, and these freeze very well by the way um, <clears throat> and then just remember when uh, you do want to take it uh, when you do want to eat them uh, you want to take them out a good uh, 30 30 minutes to an hour ahead of time so that it has a chance to thaw out so we did the tucks. Yeah, the tucks don't have to be real pretty. It's just there, and it just helps shape uh, more of a crescent shape, <clears throat> and, and that's what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead, do a whole bunch of these, and we'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, we are now at the fun part, which is cooking. I've made a, a few dozen of the uh, uh, the soy gal and. The oil is now 400 degrees, so we're going to slowly start putting some in to cook. You don't want to put too many in there because you're, there's some uh, tending to that, that you're going to need to do, which is kind of the flipping so that uh, they cook on all sides equally. And you know, these will be in the, the fryer just for a couple of minutes. That's all it takes. Uh, there's not a lot of meat to, uh, <clears throat> to cook. And it's, this is 400 degrees, the oil. Uh, and you want to make sure that you, you have the oil up to at least that uh, temperature. And then you want to give two, two and a half minutes to the cooking process or you can see that these are nice, nicely uh, browning, so they're almost ready right here. You don't want to overcook them. And so what you want to do, if uh, you have a spider, that works best to get a bunch of them out at the same time and not lose a lot of oil. And then we're going to put some more in. Four, five, six. <clears throat> and as you see, I'm only doing six at a time. Then that way uh, I don't lose a whole lot of heat in the uh, oil. And <clears throat> you want to flip these so that both sides brown evenly. And like I said, it, it only takes a couple of minutes. Just when your shell is, is nicely uh, brown like these, <clears throat> the inside is also cooked. Should not see any kind of oily or wet spots uh, on the uh, shell as you uh, finish cooking everything. And uh, you see this... <clears throat> These are being flipped one last time before I pull them out. This time is just about up. 
And these are, are the deep fried version. And we're going to do six more. And this way we have plenty to eat. And these are, are great hors d'oeuvres. Uh, if you have a cocktail party, um, or any kind of party actually because these these are um, while they're a lot of work they are really tasty and people love these and it's been a long time since since I actually had some of these <clears throat> and, and what happened was uh, these this was a real popular dish back in the 60s and <clears throat> it was about mid 70s where um, this dish literally disappeared from the restaurant uh, menus in the Oakland Chinatown, the Soy Gao, because it was one of my favorites. And uh, one of the last places that had, had that was uh, Lantern Restaurant, and that was owned by a friend uh, of the family. And so, you know, they made that special for a while, and then they stopped. <clears throat> so anyway, that's... Uh, how we uh, deep fry soy gao. Uh, the other ways that you can uh, serve it, uh, you can serve it in a soup, even after it's been fried, and, uh, and then, or you can do it in a soup you know, before cooking, like these. You can put that into a soup and the hot soup, cook it in the hot soup, or put it into a steamer and steam them uh, and then uh, steam them for about 15 minutes on uh, real hard steam and it works really well so anyway that's the dish and that's how you prepare soy gal otherwise known as water dumplings or uh, back in my day soy gal meant water dogs so <clears throat> either way it was a lot of fun uh, making them they're really delicious, and it's also one of the uh, good ways if your uh, kids don't want uh, carrots to kind of sneak in the carrots. Thanks for joining me. Hope this helps you out.